Hello everyone. This is the the uh, solar powered, the sun powered, sun powered scooter project. This is the Xiaomi Meijia M365. We have the Jenison 41.7 volt lithium. Um, it's a MPPT maximum power point tracking solar charge controller. It's for charging lithium batteries from Jenison. Okay, so we have the scooter opened up. I have this just sitting here. And I ran the scooter battery down a little bit, just a little. I ran around the, couple, the blocks a couple uh, block a couple times, and we have the solar panels in the background here. These are the Elfland, I think Sun Power makes them, which would make them a between uh, approximately 24% efficiency, approximately. Uh, so between 20 and 24% efficiency, and these do well in um, cloudy overcast, from what I understand, because they're monocrystalline. They're not the polycrystalline, the older technology. So they're monocrystalline, which is... Oh, there's my cat. Hi, Charmer. <laughs> she's she's uh, come to say hi. Hi. <laughs> she likes the scooter. She likes the project. Okay, so um, basically we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of charging here, see if we can do a little charging with the battery here. So I'm just going to set the tripod down. Let me see how I can do this. So I'm going to connect Hi <laughs> Okay, just letting Chalmers say hi Okay, so yeah, she's looking, she likes this, she likes the project, she likes the solar panels, she likes the electric scooter She's very interested in this and she likes when I'm filming. <laughs> she always runs over to the camera when I'm filming. Somehow she knows I'm filming. Okay, so the voltmeter will be the last thing I hook up. Let's hook up the solar panels directly to the... Okay, so the solar panels are 160 watt solar panels. That's uh, They're producing about 19, just over 19 volts at at, uh, make sure you can s kind of see what I'm doing here. Producing 19 volts. Apologies for the delays here. It's kind of hard to run camera and <laughs> set up the, do the experiment at the same time. Okay, yeah, it's not going very well because I can't tilt the. I'll try to just lean it. Okay, so this is not the recommended way to do this in terms of hooking this up because these can slide out of this. But just for 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 temporarily, solar panels. This is panel right here. It's saying panel goes into the. It says eight amp max. That means the panel cannot provide more than eight amps. That's for this one. If you want a more powerful maximum power point tracking that's more powerful than this, then um, I think we'd have to look at Blue Sky, because Blue Sky, I think, combined with with Jenison, and uh, from what I understand, Blue Sky, from what I was reading, Blue Sky is making the more powerful, higher power stuff, whereas Jenison is making lower power uh, charger charge with uh, charge controllers maximum power point tracking yeah this can slide out very easily which is we really need a good connection here but let's just see if it'll stay for the test okay that's connected that's connected it says charging. See the light flashing? Charging. So that's charging the battery now with the solar panels. How much? How much is it charging? So we know it's charging the 41.7 volts, which is the voltage you need for lithium for this battery which is a 36 volt battery, but fully charged, it'll be, it'll be, uh, 
Okay, I'm just looking at that code. One, it's going one, two, one, two. Okay, the book will tell me what that means. I'll have to look into that. But it seems like it's good. It seems like it's charging to me. Let me, um, I can't angle the, the phone down. Maybe I could set it here. I'm just trying to show you guys what I'm doing. So we want to make a trailer or something, or buy a trailer, that we can connect to the back of the scooter and possibly mount the, the solar panels on the scooter as well. We're also open to that. So let's see what our battery voltage is at right now. So before I, ch I hooked all this up, the battery voltage was at 39, just over 39 volts. So let's go to here. Negative and positive. My cat's saying hi again. Hi, Charmer. She does a silent kind of meow to me. Okay, we're at 39. Yes, yeah, so the battery is charging. We have it. Yeah, here's the battery voltage right here. Oh, I'm blocking the solar panel right now. <laughs> Let's see. Battery voltage. 39.7 volts. Battery is charging, the green light's flashing. So 39.7 volts. And we're losing sunlight here. You can see that the panel is starting to get into shade down here. This is all getting shaded. But look, it's going up. The voltage is going up. It went up to 39.71. So the voltage is going up. And this is showing it as charging. Let me get the book. I'll be right back. There's a book that the book will tell me also what this is doing. So I'll let this continue to charge. Um, and the, you know, we're losing power here because the sun is starting to, to cast a shadow on the panels more and more. So the power I get will be less and less, but you can see that the voltage is going up. And these panels can produce, they're, they're rated at eight amps, um, approximately 19 volts. And I've, I've read up to 157 watts out of them. They're, 100, they're 160 watt. I'll wait till the plane goes by for sound. They're um, 160 watt panels, and I've, re I've read up to 157 watts. So uh, this maximum power point tracking, which uh, tracks the voltage fluctuations 15 times per second, versus from what I've read, some track less than that. So if you go into shadow, and this doesn't know it, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be able to char charge the batteries in the most efficient way. So you want. It sounds to me like, from what I've researched, this is a very good system. And the person that, in, that uh, made this system, that designed it, or, or chose to create it, he, um, the story that I understand from what I read on the website was that he actually broke down in the ocean and he opened up his controller. He had a controller different than this one, but it, was, it did the same thing. And he looked inside and thought, you know, I, I think I can do better than this. And he made basically the best one he could make from what I understand, and that's this one, Jenison. So Jenison, they make them for lead acid batteries, they make them for lithium batteries. This is the one for lithium, and this is the one that's rated at 41.7. They also has a, have a custom, where you can do custom, uh, custom voltages, from what I understand. So this is the scooter upside down. I ordered a bike rack that's gonna hold this up, so that's coming. And then here's the panels that we're starting out with. 160 watt Elfland SP22s. I got them for just over $200 on eBay, like 225. So uh, they price it very. There can be some less and some higher. But these are the Mona Crystalline, and I believe they're by Sun, Sun Power. So let me go get the book for the, uh, the charger here. And I want to just read what it says, because it tells me what, the, what that means when it's uh, the light flashing. I'll be right back.
Okay, so I'm back. I just brought the book with me. It's explaining what the what it means when the light flashes at different um, intervals. <clears throat> so we don't have any red flashing, which looks like it's good because that's an LED. That's an error indication. So it has a multicolored color LED. So let's see. It says. The battery is connected properly and ready to charge when the solar panel power is available. Two seconds between blinks. So it was blink at two second intervals. Um, charging low current. Input current less than 3.5 amps. Fast and short blinks. So if it's doing fast and short blinks, that means it's charging at lo less than 3.5 amps. Charging high current. Input current more than 3.5 amps. Longer blinks. Okay, so this does look like short blinks to me. You can see it's real fast blinking. Yeah, so that looks like it's less than 3.5 amps. But what I'm thinking is the charger that came with this scooter, which plugs in right here, and you can see the wires where, where that plugs in. It's the black and red one right there. This is the charger that came with it. That's where that's where the pl charger plugs in that came with the scooter. And it goes back, it goes to this plug, and then it goes back to the battery. And that one uh, charges at 1.7 amps. And to me, I, I, I think of that as being a very low number. So these panels can charge up to 8 amps. So that's a lot faster. And I know with 1 8 scale, uh, in the airplane, uh, remote control airplanes or remote control uh, cars, uh, eight scale and tenth scale and quarter scale and all those different larger, you know, different size remote control uh, airplanes and remote control cars, as the the hobbies, the hobby, the hobby, uh, in the hobby field, um, some of those can charge really really high amperage and voltage or not, the voltage has to be set for the batteries but amperage can be very very high. So I don't know what these can take as a maximum amperage, but um, it looks like you know this only goes up to eight amp. It can only take eight amps from the panel maximum, and so if I'm charging at like around two amps going in, and the way I'm thinking about doing that is, uh, so if I'm going at two about two amps in, I th I feel like that should be okay, and we're just gonna experiment and see what it, how it does. Um, the, so these, this is what I'm thinking of doing. The scooter cannot be charged. It cannot receive a charge, I, I, I learned through experimenting with this. It will not let me charge it while the scooter is, is on. So I'm not going to use this plug here. Now I'm studying, I've uh, been studying Marissa Muller's uh, electric bike. I've been trying to understand how she did that. She said she toggled into, uh, if you looked at, look up Marissa Muller, and we have a, a playlist on, on our channel that shows several of her videos of her crossing the country and talking about her journey, uh, actually talking about her journey crossing the country and, and her bike, her electric bike, and how she's used solar panels to do uh, 60 to 70 percent of the work while she does some pedaling. And she chose that because she wanted to do some pedaling for to strengthen her body and for her health. So she wanted to contribute, you know, 30 to 40 percent of the work by pedaling. So she chose that, but but um, she was saying that the solar panels provided 60 to 70 percent of the work, which was perfect for her, a perfect balance, and she was traveling, I think, uh, approximately 70 miles a day, which was limited by how, how uncomfortable, it, I guess, it would become sitting on a seat for that long of a time period. So she said after 70 miles, uh, if I recall correctly, after 70 miles, that was uh, her limit for sitting that long. So then she would take a break, rest, and the next day she would do another 70 miles. And she crossed the country that way. But uh, she was talking about how she toggled into the, the power where, where you plug in on her uh, bicycle. It's a Schwinn, I believe. A Schwinn, uh, I think it's a Schwinn Specialized S model. Um, not sure of all the specifications on it. But I think it is a, a 250 watt motor as well, which this has. This has a 250 watt motor. But I, what I wanted to say to you before, and I didn't mention, was that this motor, when I'm going really slow on the scooter, and I'm just cruising along the... Uh, my, my journey and I'm going you know let's say I'm going like between five and seven miles an hour or maybe a little slower I looked at my phone which has it's hooked up to the app that that the that this computer communicates with the computer uh, communicates with the computer on the scooter and I'm using as little as 50 watts 
as little as 50 watts. So my thoughts are if I'm traveling at a 50 watt consumption, which is just going very, very slow along the, the you know, along my path, my journey, um, these solar panels rated for 160 watts can easily produce uh, 50 watts or more. So I'm thinking this can really extend the range and possibly even add endless range depending on my load. Load being how, how much power I'm drawing, how fast I'm going. This scooter is very efficient and very fast. Um, it's a 250 watt motor but it accelerates very very quickly and when you go really slow in it like I was saying it will only use around 50 watts and I've done that for quite a distance which I think is how I achieved going uh, over 19 miles and still having 43% battery remaining when I rented a bird scooter once. <laughs> and the only reason the scooter stopped, if you looked, uh, we have a video we posted recently that, that actually shows the 19 mile range that I did. Um, it doesn't show the battery capacity that remained after that, but the battery capacity was still at 43% and the reason for that was I was just going very, very slow. And I was using the, the kinetic energy recovery system as much as possible, which means not using this handbrake because the handbrake's a friction brake, but just letting the scooter stop itself, which puts power back into the battery. Uh, it's, this has analog braking system. It's a, it, they call it an analog braking system, but it's also a kinetic energy recovery system, and it's actually turning the motor into a generator, and or the motor is a generator. It's, it's also a generator, so when it's not moving the scooter through m m through your journey, and you when you're not putting energy into the motor it's putting energy back into the battery. So that's the way the scooter is designed, but there is more energy used just maintaining speed. There's energy lost from the battery in, that, in this situation, the way it's made. Uh, so adding solar panels can extend that range, and a lot of people are doing this. There's groups all over the world that are travel, you know, doing trips across countries with uh, solar panels. So this is our our version of that and and we're studying the people that have done this before and that are doing it currently and it's exciting so if you have any ideas about how we can improve this please do share one of my thoughts about um, mounting I think I mentioned this before but I don't know if I got into this much detail one of my thoughts about mounting the solar panels because literally this these solar panels are 33 inches tall that's a 33 inch tall solar panel by approximately 21 inches each panel okay so 33 tall by 21 each panel high, uh, width and these there's a zipper that separates these two and I can separate them so one of my thoughts was when I, when I bought them was to put one panel on each side of the scooter and mount them that way but I'm thinking I you know people and I like the design of the scooter too a lot but people like the design of the scooter so much and I do too I don't know if I want to cover up the scooter I don't know if I want to cover it with panels so I might just have a trailer that I pull these panels on and I'm having a lot of different ideas how to use uh, highly reflective materials around the panels to help bring light in so I'm, I'm interested in that too and I'm studying this online on the internet with other people that are, that are doing this and I've done this so I'm learning as much as I can um, please feel free in the comments to share any videos that you think might help me with this project if there's any people that are, that are making solar bikes or solar go-karts or solar anything where you're seeing, they're, they're explaining very well the, the uh, see it's still charging. Look at this, it's still charging and there's almost no sun hitting those panels. You see how little sun there is? I mean, there's just, the sun, it's, it's like going through a, it's going through that tree right there. See that tree? It's, it's going through that tree and it's, the leaves are blocking the sunlight. And that's what these panels, the monocrystalline solar panels, are known, if you read about them, they're, they're just, they're, they're, they talk about them as being very good in, in low light. So, versus the polycrystalline. So monocrystalline versus polycrystalline. And these are monocrystalline, monocrystalline, and I believe sun power makes them. From my, re my research indicate that sun power makes those. So, what else was I going to say? Well, there'll be more videos, and for now, I'm going to wrap this one up. Please share your ideas. I think that's what I was saying. Share your ideas, and share any channels on YouTube or any, any uh, web pages on the internet that you think would be helpful to the project if you want. And if you're building a solar bike or solar scooter, please share your, your adventure and your journey with me. I, I'd be very interested in learning how you're approaching your project, and I'll continue to share my journey as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. And don't forget to check out all of Marissa Moeller's videos. Um, she already achieved crossing the country with a solar bike. 
same same wattage motor 250 watt motor same voltage battery pack 36 volts uh, and I think her bike weighed more I think she was 50 pounds and this one's 26 pounds so this one weighs less and this is a scooter there's no pedals on it so we won't be pedaling so um, but yeah study her her uh, her journey and she's really passionate about what I understand to be the evolution of basically the way that we use and relate to clean energy technologies. It's the evolution of a, the, the experience of a way of interacting with technology that's more efficient and can teach us how to uh, make less pollution, less smog. <laughs> make less smog. So uh, look forward to uh, hearing your, your ideas and, and if you have nothing to say please like, subscribe, and like I said before, you can always comment. If you don't comment now, you can always comment later. But uh, like, subscribe, and, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.